Hey traders, in today's video we'll be going over a simple Bollinger Bands and RSI trading strategy. Let's get right into it. So the first step of this strategy is going to be setting up the Bollinger Bands properly. So click on Indicators, search for Bollinger Bands, and then click on this search result. Now, we're going to have to make a few changes to the Bollinger Bands so that they work better for this strategy. So let's do that now. So double click on the Bollinger Bands to bring up the settings. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the background since it's not really needed for this strategy. So simply click on this button and slide the opacity all the way down to 0%. Next, I'm going to go in and change all three of these colors to black. Okay, now let's adjust the input settings for the Bollinger Bands. So the first setting we're going to change is the length. So for those traders who don't know, the Bollinger Bands are made up of three lines. The middle line is simply just a moving average, which takes the average of the previous candlesticks and plots them as a line on our chart. So for example, if we left the length at 20, then this line would show the average of the last 20 candles. But for this strategy, we're going to change the length to a setting of 30. The upper and lower lines that you see, which are the upper and lower bands, are controlled by this setting. This word means standard deviation. So by leaving this setting at 2, that means we have a line plotted two standard deviations both above and below the moving average. For this strategy, a setting of 2 for the standard deviation will work just fine. Okay, now we have the Bollinger Band set up properly, so let's set up the RSI as well. So click on Indicators, search for RSI, and then click on the search result labelled Relative Strength Index. You should now see the RSI appear below your chart. So double click anywhere on the RSI to bring up the settings and let's make a few changes. So the first thing we're going to do is once again remove the background by sliding the opacity all the way down to zero. We're going to leave the upper and lower levels at 70 and 30, which are represented by these light grey lines on the indicator. And then we're going to change the colour of the RSI line to blue. For the input settings of the RSI, the only setting we're going to change is the length. It's currently set to 14, meaning it's taking into account the last 14 candles. But for this strategy, we're going to change this setting to 13 instead. Alright, if you followed along, then your chart should be set up exactly like this. So let's move on to the strategy portion of the video. So there are two main strategies we're going to focus on when using the RSI and Bollinger Bands. Both of these strategies are built upon the concept of something called mean reversion. So what exactly is this? The word mean refers to average, whereas the word reversion means returning to. So to put it simply, mean reversion means returning to the average. So in terms of our trading strategy, we're going to wait for price to stretch out in one direction, and then we're going to look to enter a trade with the expectation that price will return to the average. So if we see price stretching out to the upside, then we're going to look to place a sell trade with the expectation that price will move back down. And if we see price stretching out to the downside, then we'll look to place a buy trade with the expectation that price will move back up. All right, let's go over the first strategy. So you can see here that there were many times where price closed outside of the Bollinger Bands. We see it happening here and here and here and here and so on. So the first step of this strategy is going to be to wait for price to close outside of the Bollinger Bands. If price closes outside of the upper Bollinger Band, then we're going to look to place a sell trade. And if price closes outside of the lower Bollinger Band, then we're going to look to place a buy trade. But this alone is not enough for us to look for a trade entry. We're going to combine this with the RSI. So after price has closed outside of the Bollinger Bands, we're going to wait for the RSI to hit an extreme level before we look for an entry. This means that if we're looking to place a buy trade, then we're going to wait for the RSI to hit at least a level of 25 before entering. And if we're looking to place a sell trade, then we're going to wait for the RSI to hit a level of at least 75 before entering. So let's go through this trade example. Here we have a strong move outside of the upper Bollinger Band, which means we would be looking for a sell trade. So we need to wait for the RSI to hit a level of at least 75 before we can look for an entry. 
On the close of this first candle, the RSI hits a level of 79, which means we can now look for a sell entry. But we're not going to immediately place a trade as soon as this occurs. We're going to wait for a sign on the charts that sellers are entering the market before we enter our sell trade, and we're going to use this as a form of confirmation. So in this example, we can see that price actually made two attempts to push to the upside. This first attempt comes on the initial move outside of the Bollinger Bands, and price hits a high here. We then see a pullback back inside of the Bollinger Bands, and we see a second attempt to push higher. On this attempt, price is unable to move above the previous high, and we see another red bearish candle form. This is a sign that sellers are entering the market, and price could possibly push down further from here. So when we see this red candle form, we would be on the lookout for a sell entry. If price is able to break below the low of this candle, then we would enter a sell trade, and put our stop loss just above the previous high that was formed. Where you decide to take your profit on this trade comes down to the individual trader and their preferences. But when price pulls back into the middle of the Bollinger Bands, this can often provide a great opportunity to close at least a portion of your trade. Now there's something very important you need to understand before using this strategy, otherwise it won't work. On occasion, the markets will be in a very strong trend. You can see that the RSI goes below the 25 level for the very first time here. But instead of reversing to the upside, we see a small pullback and a continuation of a very strong downtrend, where the RSI goes all the way down to a level of 6. In these kinds of market environments, you want to avoid using this particular strategy. You need to wait for the very strong trend to end first. So I'm going to show you a trick you can use to help spot these very strong trends before they develop, so you can switch to a strategy more suited for a trending market. Before this downtrend develops, notice how both price and the RSI were behaving. Price was stuck in a very narrow range, moving mostly sideways. It was unable to go below this level here, or above this level here. And if we look at the RSI, you'll notice that it barely moves outside of the 70 and 30 zone. This kind of behaviour should fire off a warning sign in your head. When price is stuck in a narrow range like this for an extended period of time, when we finally break outside of the range, it will often result in a strong trending market. So when we see price finally break outside of the range here, you should not be looking to trade against the trend. Because in a very strong trend, the RSI can easily reach a level much lower than 25, or much higher than 75. For the second trading strategy, we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. So here we have a market that breaks out to the downside and begins hugging the lower Bollinger Band. We see a loss of momentum as the candles start to get smaller and these wicks appear on the end of them. We then see a large green candle form that engulfs the previous six red candles, and price pushes to the upside. When price pushes back down, we see a new low form, and this is where our buy trade opportunity comes into play. So on the left, we have a swing low, and when price pushes down for the second time, it makes a lower low. But if we look at the RSI during this same period of time, we have a low on the left here, but on the second push down, the RSI makes a higher low. So we have price making a lower low, but the RSI making a higher low. This is called divergence, and would have resulted in a great buy opportunity. But when looking to take these kinds of trades, there's a few tips you need to follow to increase the probabilities in your favour. The first tip is to make sure that the RSI hits an extreme on the first push. So in this example, the RSI hits a level of 18 on the first pushdown, making this a higher probability trade. The second tip is to make sure the Bollinger Bands are nice and wide when you take this kind of trade. We can see on the left that the Bollinger Bands were very narrow during certain periods of time, so we would avoid looking for a trade when that happens. But when the Bollinger Bands open up and they're nice and wide, similar to how they were at this point in time, then that will result in a much better trading opportunity.